He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. After covering two of the phyla within the clade Nathifera, it's time to cover the third and final. The so-called wheel animals of phylum Rotifera account for over 2,000 named mostly free-living species and an additional 1,200 species of obligate intestinal parasites known as acanthocephalans. In this tutorial, we will focus on some of the free-living, non-parasitic rotifers found all over the world. Though many people have never heard of them, it's quite likely that everyone watching this video has interacted with them in some capacity numerous times in their lives. Rotifers have been found in nearly every body of water around the globe, from backyard pools to ponds to puddles to lakes and streams and even individual water droplets. They've even been found to form the nucleus necessary for a drop of rain to form. In fact, they're so common that simply drinking unchlorinated water is likely to result in the ingestion of a few rotifers. Don't worry though, free-living rotifers are harmless and have no deleterious impacts on humans. Rotifers are microscopic pseudocelomates. They demonstrate utile, meaning that they cease undergoing mitosis once they complete their embryonic development. Some species, such as Epiphanes senta, also demonstrate cell constancy. All adults of this species always have the same number of cellular nuclei, 959. Other species vary considerably in their final adult cell count. This is a bit different than other eutelic animals, like the nematode C. elegans, which have a fixed number of somatic cells, but continue to divide their germline, also known as sex cells, as adults. This is not the case in rotifers, as they seem to stop cell division even in the germline. Rotifers are considered to be non-segmented, though they do have distinct body regions, those being the head, which bears their ciliated corona, a trunk, which holds most of their internal organs, and a posterior foot. Their bodies lack cilia except for the corona. It is the rhythmic beating of the cilia within the corona that gives these animals their name. Cilia on the corona beat in synchronous succession, giving the appearance of a revolving wheel or pair of wheels. The beating of these cilia aids in both locomotion and feeding. The mouth is located in the corona on the mid-ventral side. Within the mouth, rotifers have a muscular mastax and trophy, which form the complex jaw, characteristics of all animals within clade nathifera, though the rotiferan jaw is distinctly different from those of micronathozoans and nathostomulates, as well as ketognaths. For this anatomical example, we will examine members of the genus Phylodina, since they are perhaps the best known and most commonly studied genus of deloid rotifers. Though the trunk region is elongated in this genus, it is sac-like in others, such as those of the genus Esplankna. The trunk contains most of the animal's organs and is occasionally superficially ringed, which gives the appearance of segmentation. All rotifers have a fibrous layer that can be quite thick in some species and forms a case like lorica, which is often arranged in plates or rings. The rotifer foot is generally narrower and usually ends in one to four toes, which are used in attachment to surfaces, since they contain pedal glands that secrete an adhesive material used by both creeping and sessile forms. Rotifers are able to move by creeping or leech-like movements aided by their foot, or by swimming with the coronal cilia. The pseudocelum of rotifers is quite large and occupies the space between the body wall and internal organs. It is filled with fluid, occasional muscle bands, and a network of amoeboid cells. Most rotifers have a complete digestive system. Once food is captured and ground up in their muscular jaws, it is covered in gastric juices and other digestive enzymes secreted from the salivary and digestive glands. Absorption of nutrients occurs primarily in the stomach, a large holding chamber that aids in digestion. The rotifer excretory system is comprised of a pair of protonephridial tubules that contain several flame cells, much like the free-living members of phylum platyhelminthes. 
these tubules empty into a common bladder that contracts and empties waste into a bladder-like structure that fills up and expels its contents. Both the anus and oviducts also empty into the cloaca when present, though not all species have a cloaca. Rotifers have a rather large bilobed brain, at least in proportion to their body, and this brain is dorsal to the jaws. They are capable of mechanoreception through the bristles in their corona, which allow them to detect and respond to certain kinds of stimuli, most notably touch, sound, and changes in pressure or posture. There are also photoreceptors in the form of up to five pit eyes that respond to light, and chemoreceptors in the form of sensory pits located in the head region. And that covers some general features that are shared by all members of phylum rotifera, but there is quite a bit more to discuss in the way of the taxonomy within this clade, so let's move forward and dig a little deeper. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Thank you.